good evening. Uh, without breaking the protocol, can you allow me to greet the Rwandans uh, in the UK and in Europe and my friends here in London? Greetings to everybody. <coughs> Um, it's really a great pleasure. I won't say much, but I just want to go straight to the point. I want to say, uh, if you remember very well in 2000, I think 2008, when we had a similar event like this uh, in Brussels, and the president uh, gave us really the whole idea of how you construct a house. Where you, stand, where you start with the foundation. And if the foundation is so strong, it means you can now start building the house on top of that foundation. At the point where we are now, we have completed that kind of foundation that the president was telling you about. Because we have built all the governance structures, all the institutions, the peace and security reinforced, and now we are talking about the future of our country. We have a very strong macroeconomic stability together with a high economic growth starting from the year 2000. As you recall, in 1994, our economy declined by half. The inflation was quite high, 64%. And from that time, we started thinking about the vision. And the presidency vision started in the year 2000. At that point, we had the debt levels were above 100%, and the poverty levels were extremely high, rising from 77% from 1995. And at that point, when we came to, with the vision of reaching a middle-income country, that's when we started implementing it. And we started also building the blocks, the building blocks of our macroeconomic stability. But I'm happy to tell you that things have changed, and they have changed for good. Since that time, and as the president was talking at Oxford University today, our economy has registered significant. Um, I was saying that. Uh, as the president, yeah. It seems the podium is not friendly. Uh, I was just saying that, uh, as the president was saying in Oxford today, our economy has been growing above 8% on average ever since 2000. Uh, but we have, it's not just the growth of the economy, it is an inclusive growth. Where from the year 2000 to the year 2001, the poverty levels have declined significantly. As I said, from 77% in 1995, they came down from the year 2006 from 57%, and by the year 2001 to 2011, they were at 44.9%. And the extreme poverty had declined also from 36% in the year 2006 to 24% in the year 2011. So that growth of the economy was growing the economy, but at the same time, reducing the poverty levels. Our target is to make sure that by the year 2020, we don't have extreme poverty. And the global poverty levels will have declined by at least less than 20%. Our target is to reach economic growth on average of 11.5%. And that's why you are saying that this one can be sustained because our macroeconomic is stable. With high growth, low inflation in a single digit, our financial sector that is stable, and this has helped in terms of sustaining the economy. We have a good business conducive environment that has been sustained. And usually, to test how far we've gone in terms of the economic development, we've had different levels of measurement. One of them is the ease of doing business, where Rwanda is number three in Africa. We also have the competitiveness index by the World Economic Forum, where Rwanda is number three in Africa as well. 
recently, and as the president was saying, the Oxford uh, University, uh, the recent baseline profitability index, Rwanda was number five in the whole world. And also, if you look at the Also, in terms of corruption, Rwanda is still among the least corrupt countries, where, which has zero tolerance on corruption, and is still number four in Africa. <laughs> so, coming from a raw base, uh, coming from quite very far, where in 1994 we had a genocide, the economy had declined by half. The country had no social governance structures. Coming from that level now, measuring itself among the top in the world, where Rwanda is number one in terms of the uh, uh, safest place for women to work at night in the whole world. You can go almost from any direction, whether it is the greenest or the cleanest city, you will find it in Chigari. Whether it is in the area of uh, uh, political stability, Rwanda ranks among the highest. So all these are indicators that are showing that Rwanda is on the move. And most recently, I don't know if there are people here from PNB Paribus and from City. These gentlemen and their companies have helped us very much. Recently, you saw when we put our bond, our sovereign bond on the market, we wanted 400 million. We ended up getting 3.5 billion. You know, this is where the global private sector people are measuring us. They are telling us, we like your economic performance, we like your leadership, we like everything that you do. These are the people who don't live in Rwanda. These are the people who are looking at us from outside, and we need to be judged from outside. We worked with City, we worked with PNB, Paribus, and it showed really the appetite that the global world is having. We sold it at a coupon rate of 6.625. And at that point, it started selling even higher. 6.875%. But we are looking for retro money. And once they tell us that way, they are giving us a message that actually Rwanda is doing a good job. But then, how do you test its resilience? Because these are outsiders who are telling us. How you test the resilience of the stability of the economy is that in the year 2009, when you had global economic financial crisis, no single bank in Rwanda that went under will sue the whole storm. When there were problems in the Arab countries in the year 2011, and the prices of fuel went up, we are the only country in the entire region that had inflation that remained the single digit, the highest that we ever had. The highest that we ever had was 8.3% inflation rate. And it has kept coming down. By the end of last year, we are 3.8. In the month of March, we are 3.3. Last month, we are at 4.4. We are still a single digit. That means providing a conducive environment. Now, another test was last year. When all of a sudden, the development partners delayed or stopped their investment in Rwanda, the aid. But still our economy grew by 8%, despite the delayed donor resources. So what that means is that Rwanda has reached a level where, which is resilient, which is stable, and we need to move another distance. And that's why we are coming up with another level of the second generation of economic development and the poverty reduction strategy. That level, we are focusing on economic transformation. We are focusing this one just to continue to grow our economy. We are focusing on rural development to make sure you have an impact on poverty. We are focusing on skills development across the board so that we can sustain the entire economy, especially focusing on our youth. Our youth is 38% 
of the entire population, and we are focusing on making sure that we sharpen those skills of our population to sustain the economy. The last one is accountable governance, of course, where the ordinary people have to participate in service delivery as well. But then I wouldn't really want to end by saying that we have reached there. Because for us to implement it, we need you, we need private sector, we need other partners, we need the Friends of Rwanda to be able to deliver on that kind of promise. So far where we have reached, the economy did not simply grow. It grew because there is proper leadership of our head of state, clear direction, and he's the one who is leading almost every aspect of how we grow in a conducive environment with stable governance, with institutions that work, with delivery of government programs, and also leading by example in terms of attracting the investments in our own country. And that's why Rwanda is making significant progress. Now the president has come up with another vision, with another strategy to implement our vision. And that's where we don't have any doubt that we are going by the year 2017, our poverty levels should have grown down to 30%. Our private sector growth uh, should have exceeded the public investment uh, by 15.4%. Uh, and at the same time, we'll have be able to cover the inputs by, 70, by 75%. With this, we believe that achieving our vision, we can only do it if we work with the private sector. And that's why we are creating a conducive environment for the private sector to be able to generate enough resources to invest. That's why we are focusing on capital markets. That's why we are focusing on raising resources for the private sector so that they can invest with us. That's why we are focusing on creating a conducive environment for people from outside to invest either foreign direct investment or portfolio investment. And for diaspora, where I would want to call them the Rwandans living abroad, you have a significant role to play because you are the ones who have the skills, who live in these countries, who can do a lot of investments by helping uh, your brothers and sisters, your parents back home. You can also do the necessary investment. Soon we'll be talking about the diaspora investment that will be trading on the capital market, of which you should play a very significant role. And also, you are the people who can tell the Rwandan story because you follow what is going on. You are the people who are living here but understanding both worlds, where you live and also in Rwanda. You follow up what is happening. You are the best ambassador that Rwanda could ever have. So your role is quite significant in terms of contributing to your motherland uh, with regard to economic development. So I didn't want to, um, I didn't want to say much, but then I would appreciate for any questions uh, together with my colleagues here to answer them. Uh, so let me stop here and just, I'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you.